weakness someone falls upon their knees But as to speak the truth that sets men free Anytime the choice is made to stand upon the word I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move in many mighty ways God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move, on the move today Give him a hand clap of praise. Yes, yes, yes. How good and pleasant it is to dwell together again with my brothers and sisters in unity. Amen, amen, amen. So, as we begin our fourth quarter, we have a new theme this quarter. And of course, you see it. It's called Loving Red. The reference scripture is 1 Peter 4 and 8. Above all, keep and love one another. Earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sin. Oh, how true that is. How true it is. Uh, uh, so as we look at this quarter, we go into the theme of loving greater. I want to continue to look at a text that I introduced to you about two weeks ago. Because I didn't feel it would be fair to leave you hanging. I gave you the introduction, so now i got to come back and give you some meat. Amen? Amen. So two weeks ago, we looked at the introductional text uh, uh, um, and I believe that we will see in this text how Jesus loved us so much with such great depth that he prayed to the Father concerning our well-being. So going back to the book of John, when I introduced this passage of scriptures, we dove into verses 1 through 5. We were able to pull out some of the truths that was implanted in the text. Like how we have to assume the right posture when we enter into prayer with God. And how we have to allow God's love to shine through in our prayer time. That we have eternal life through Jesus Christ and him alone. Are you hearing me? And also we have to understand that we serve a holy God. He deserves the reverence that's due to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We also found out that we need to understand our calls and our gifts. And how we can use them for the kingdom. And along with declaring that we must always give honor to God. And in the end of that, 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 that sermon, it gave us a glimpse into the Trinity when Jesus honored his interpersonal relationship with the Father through the Godhead. So as we talk about greater love this quarter, keep in mind that Jesus' love is unconditional. And in this passage of scripture, even though he knew his fate, he knew what was to come because shortly after this he would be captured, he prayed to God interceding on our behalf to continue to show us mercy and grace. Now let's just sit on that for one second. Think about that. Knowing that he would soon be captured and the things that would happen to him, he took time out to pray for you and for me and for his disciples. Wow. Mm. Almost like he was confirming the finished work that God had given him to do, along with giving him a measurement of our progress. So as we continue to look at this prayer that Jesus prayed, we will see in it how much he loved us and cared about us and the people that God had gave to him to return. So if you have your Bibles with you, and I know that you do because this is church. Amen. 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 If you need some, we do have some over there in the rack in the back. If you need to get a Bible, we do have some over there for you to use while you're here. Go ahead and open your Bibles up to the book of John. It is the fourth synoptic gospel of the New Testament, chapter number 17. When you're there, say amen. amen. We're going to start our reading right around verse 6, following through the 16. And this is where we pick up the text. We see Jesus in the midst of this incredible prayer, knowing that he would, in just a little bit of time, he would be arrested, thrown into jail, beaten savagely, and ought to be led to the cross of Calvary to where he would lay down his life. My God, there is no greater love than that, that you would lay down your life for another. 
So if you have your Bibles with you, let's honor the Lord this family. Please stand for the reading of the word. If you can, if you're able. Starting at verse 6. And the Bible says, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you have gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All minds are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Verse 11. And I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I'm going, coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost, except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God. Let your anointing fall fresh today, O God. Let your word, Father God, be nourishment and nutrients to our soul, O Lord. Let it be something of sustenance, God, that we may eat off of and thrive off of and live off of, O Lord. May it be to our soul what food is to our body. Now, Father, as we pull our chairs up to your table and you begin to break the bread of life and feed us your flock, Lord, Father, I ask that you just hide me behind your cross, Lord. Decrease, advance, and increase in you, Lord, so that transformation in the heart may take place. Speak this morning, God. Because, Father, I know that you can speak to all of us at the same time and say something different to each and every one of us, Father, because you're bad like that. Now, God, let you be glorified and the church be lifted up. We thank you right now for what you're going to do. In the wonderful, the glorious name of Jesus, and the saints said, Amen. 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 Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise on the way down. Glory be to God. Yes, 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 yes. Now Jesus said in verse 6 that I have manifested your name, meaning that he had made known the name the Father's name to those who followed him. Those who followed him was the disciples. And he had told the disciples, I only say what my Father tells me to say. I only do what my father tells me to do. I only do what I see my father do. Everything he did pointed back to God. He made known the father's name. Talking about the disciples, that is who the Lord gave to him out of the world. Then he said that they have kept your word. They have kept your word. Which brings me to the first thing I was able to highlight out of this text is this. Our love is reflected in our obedience. Our love is reflected in our obedience. Jesus was stating that the disciples kept his word. He was saying that they were obedient to the word of God. Amen. Now help me out this morning, church. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus was to look at your obedience, would it say to him that you love him? If he was to look at your obedience to the word of God, would your obedience say that you love him? Oh, I know it's tight, but it's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We honor Christ and we show our love for him when we are doers of the word like the Bible tells us to be. <laughs> I want you to get past this subpar living and subpar giving and live a life in victory. In order to do that, we have to be willing to be completely obedient to the things of God. Amen. Not this partial obedience that we have come to rationalize in our own minds and think it's okay with God because it's not. 
I've said it before and I will say it again. Partial obedience is still disobedience. We need to decide in our minds and in our hearts that we're going to live for God. For him we live and for him we die. That means starving our flesh, glory be to God, from the things that it's used to doing, changing our habits, changing our behaviors, bringing them under submission to the will of God. The word will make everything, oh glory be to God. When you're walking in obedience to the word, it will bring things in subject to the word. The thing that you used to do, you won't have a like, you won't like to do it anymore. The cravings that you used to have, oh God can get rid of that thing. Mm -hmm. Asking God to help us by renewing our spirit in him. Understand that our obedience to the word of God is evidence of true conversion. Amen. When you really have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with God, ain't nobody got to tell you to walk right. Oh, yeah, I like y'all ain't hearing me this morning. I said when you have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with God, don't nobody has to tell you to walk right. Because it's this thing on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit, that's going to try to keep you on the right road. Mm. Jesus wanted their obedience to be noted because it's epic in the eyes of God. It was then and it is today. Your obedience is epic in the eyes of God. It means something to the Lord when you're obedient, when you're walking that word out. It means something when you're doing what he told you to do. Amen. The text goes on to say in verse 8, For I have given them the word that you have gave me, and they have received them. And they have come to know in truth that I came to you. The next thing I was able to gleam out of this text is this. Our love for the gospel breeds understanding. Our love for the gospel breeds understanding. Jesus was faithful in giving to the disciples the word that he had gotten from the Lord. His faithfulness in this area allowed the disciples to have a true understanding of his message and his mission. It gave them confidence that all things that Christ embodied were from the Father. So they believed that Jesus was sent by God and that he came from God. We are commanded by Jesus to carry the gospel. This is the word that we have, the good news of Christ. And I'm glad that we do. When we fall in love with this message and this mission and we begin to live it out loud to the point that we are sharing it just as natural that we are breathing, we gain understanding. We gain understanding. That is translated in our passion to see people come to the saving grace of Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, the gospel continues. It's all about the gospel. The more desire we have for the lost to be saved, the deeper we dive into the word. By understanding his word, we understand the nature of God, the attributes of God, the character of God, and the love of God, which we will see in this text as Jesus prays for his disciples and the believers to come. The believers to come. That's you and me. We will see his love intertwined and woven throughout this prayer because his love is unconditional. Hmm. Verse 9 says, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. The next thing I was able to gleam out of this text is that our love for one another should drive us to intercession. Our love for our brothers and sisters should drive us to intercession, to intercede on their behalf. We, we were given as sheep to a shepherd to be kept, as patients to a physician to be cured, as children to a teacher to be taught, as clients to a lawyer to be protected. Jesus is protecting us, interceding on our behalf, just like he promised. Hebrews 7.25 says this, 
Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Yes, 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 yes. If we are to duplicate or do what Jesus did, meaning we should always be in prayer or interceding for our brothers and our sisters. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Let the love for one another push us to intercession for one another. Along with encouraging and speaking life into one another. For the love that we show one another will let the world know that we are the church. We are the church. We are the blood-bought, Bible-carrying, spirit-filled, fire-baptized, gospel-sharing, redeemed of a holy God. Amen. You better act like you know. Don't you be afraid of this gospel. Don't you be afraid to tell people that you are a disciple of Christ. You were paid for by the blood of Jesus. Walk with your head on right. Walk in holiness. Let your yes be yes and your name be name. Right. Are you hearing me? Yes. There's no guilt and there's no shame in walking in the gospel of Christ. Amen. Mm. Let oh my God, let us first depend on Christ and then each other. Because you are your brothers and your sisters keepers. Mm. Christ offered this prayer up for his believers of the world, not for the world at large. This prayer was for us. Oh, think about this. He's hours away from going from the cross of Calvary, and he took time out of his schedule to pray for you and for me. My God. What does that say about our Lord? If that's not love, because in the human mind, we can't even fathom that. We would have been thinking about the guards that's coming to arrest us and the nails that we're going to have to endure, the cross that we're going to have to hang on, and the cat of nine tails that we're going to be beaten with. The cat of nine tails, that'll make you think all by itself. When you got a leather whip that have rocks and glass and nails tied to the end of it, and every time the guards strike your back, it's ripping flesh from your carcass. That'll make you think. But the God we serve took time to pray for his disciples, for you and me. My God. Verse 10 says, all mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in him. Verse 11, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am not coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Our love should help us walk in unity. Our love should help us walk in unity. We have to walk in the unity of the Spirit so that we may be in harmony with Christ. He is not a God of chaos and confusion and disorganization, so neither should we be. The Bible says that we should be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. We have to know that this type of peace and unity that we're talking about here is only crafted by the Holy Spirit. It is the thing that allows us to commune with God. Yeah. Only the Holy Spirit can make it so. Mm. The Holy Spirit creates peace with God and peace with one another. This body of believers known as LWCC, we have to be unified, but have the same vision, the same plan, sitting on the same bus, turn the same way, going in the same direction, with one heartbeat, one voice, one spirit, under one leadership, when we're walking in lock and step with that kind of leadership, that kind of harmony, oh, I believe that God is going to show us and do some remarkable things. 
We can't let the enemy penetrate our armor by trying to sow division and strife. He wants us to focus on the one or two things that we don't agree with rather than the hundred things that we do that will move the kingdom forward. Or am I talking to somebody today? It's about the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not about me. It's about the kingdom. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Verses 12 and 13 says, while I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you gave me which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He's saying that he kept the disciples walking in righteous, protecting them and guarding them and making sure that they were all straight. And the only one that went all straight, the only one that went astray was Judas. And that was so the scripture can be fulfilled. Jesus knew that he would soon be joining the Father and it would leave a void with the disciples. So part of his prayer was that they would find joy in him. In other words, when they thought about the goodness of the Lord, Oh, my God, my God. Some of you know where you were at before God found you, before he rescued you, before he pulled you up out of the muck of the mire. When you think about the goodness of the Lord, what joy it shall bring, what hope it shall bring, what inspiration it shall bring. Oh, when I think about the goodness of God. Oh, when you've been between a rock and a hard place. Oh, glory be to God. When you didn't know where your next meal was coming from. When you didn't know where your next paycheck was to come. And God showed up and showed out in your situation. When you think about the goodness of the Lord, it should bring you joy. Amen. Or am I talking to anybody here? Amen. Glory be to God. Yes, it will. Because, see, I know. Oh, this old pastor, I know where I was at. I was on my way to hell in a handbasket. Until God stepped in and saved me. Some of you were right there with me. Matter of fact, some of you were sitting on the passenger side, right? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Can I keep it 100? Some of you were doing everything you thought you was big enough to get away with until God stepped in. And some of us thought we was doing it covertly like he don't know. You better ask somebody. This is real church with real people. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. My God, my God. The other thing I was able to gleam out of this text was this. Our love should drive us to stand up for one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you didn't see that one coming, but it's okay. <laughs> Our love should drive us to stand up for one another. Too many folk, too many times people sit around and let folks say anything they want to say about their brothers and sisters. Your love for Christ should drive you to stand up. Are you hearing me today? Jesus guarded them and protected them. He gave them wise counsel and encouragement and spoke with them in truth, love, and compassion. Shield them from the works of the enemy and also from other humans. Look how many times Jesus stood up against the Pharisees when it was coming for one of his boys. When it was coming for one of the disciples, Jesus wasn't having it. He was not having it. He always stood up for his crew. How many of you know that sometimes folk may come for one of your brothers and sisters and don't even realize that that's what they're doing? Let me talk to this side over here, y'all look like y'all engaged. Sometimes folk will come for one of your brothers and sisters through you and don't even realize that that's what they're doing. Because in their mind, they're not doing anything wrong. Based on their environment or how they grew up, they think they're checking somebody or checking you. It's the truth anyhow. Yeah, they will come for you and one of your brothers and sisters. They have no clue that they're out of pocket because they truly believe that what they're doing is right. But the key is not about what they're doing. The key is how you respond. That's the key. How do we respond? Do we respond with greater love, causing us to stand up and check that spirit? Or do we agree because we don't want conflict? So we go along and get along. Oh, come on, somebody. I know we know someone like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
But let me come, I come in and tell you today that sometimes silence is agreement. When you don't stand up for injustice when you see it, come on somebody. That's right. If you don't stand up for injustice when you see it, doesn't matter what color it is, what uniform it has on, if you don't stand up with injustice when you see it, you're in agreement with it. I know I'm right about it. Some of y'all ain't never been pulled over. Have you? Come on, I can get to go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe that we should seek God's direction and stand up for our brothers and sisters, which is the church, you and me. Stand up for your brothers and sisters and your pastors. You shouldn't allow, you shouldn't allow anybody to say anything they want about the church and the family that you're connected with. Amen. Especially if it's negative. Because they probably have no clue what's going on. You need to check that thing. Because we live in a society today where people just put anything on Satan's book. Oh. They act like I don't know what I'm talking about. Sister. They just put anything on, on Satan's book and Instacrap. You know. You know what I'm talking about. Put all kinds of stuff out there and think it's okay because nobody checks it. My mama used to say, boy, don't let anybody say anything. I got two sisters. She said, don't let anybody say anything to your sister. You don't let them do that to her. We got to keep each other in check, but ain't nobody else going to check it. Am I right about it? That's what family do. We ride together, but you just ain't gonna say anything. I love LWCC. I breathe this, I walk this, I love this. I got LWCC sauce dripping all over me. Yes, I do. Just like the blood of Jesus percolating on the inside of me. I love Jesus, I love his people. And you ain't gonna say anything you want to pass the band. Come on, somebody. I know how to deal with things. I know how to deal with Come on, try it if you want to. I love my family. This is my family. I'm going to stand up for my family. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to stand out. Am I right about it? Yeah. I don't know where this came from. I don't have no idea. But God knows, I guess. Hmm. You should love your family and its leaders enough that you don't allow anybody to say anything, especially if you know it's crazy. We should rejoice in the body that we are connected with. Own it, share it, sing its praises. We should. Just like we go see a good movie, we need to tell people about that good service. Am I right about it? Yes, we should. When one of our pastors starts a sermon or a series, we need to let people know. Because it's going to change their lives. We probably have seen every Star Wars trilogy that's out. Come get some of these sermon trilogy. Mm. As we come around the corner and going through the hill, I know y'all thinking about Golden Corral. But I think y'all know how I feel about that. Uh, verse 14 says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, but they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. The next thing I was able to glean out of this is this. Our love for Christ will cause persecution. Our love for Christ will cause persecution. Look, we have been given the mission, which is to carry this gospel message to the ends of the earth. And because of our love for God and our relentless pursuit to complete this mission, there are going to be principalities in darkness that don't want us to follow through on the Lord's command. They will stop at nothing. Even though this task is hard and complicated, I came in to tell you today to carry the gospel message is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something and you're going to get persecuted for it. So you just know that that's going to happen to you. Because it happened to Jesus. If it happened to Jesus, it's going to happen to us. But we can't let that shake us when it happens. We got 
some kingdom building to do. It's going to come. Sometimes from my own family. Oh, this is how family do. They do it real subtle, you know. You just live in that church. You there all the time. You might as well just set up a cot and stay there. You always want to hang around them church folk. Probably because they're better company than you. <laughs> Am I right about it? It will come. Sometimes it comes. Sometimes it's not always so up in your face. You know what I'm saying? People try to you know, slide it in. You know. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Persecution is persecution. That's true, cool, baby girl. That's right. She knows. Don't you dare take out of here. I love that girl. That's right. It happens. Don't let it shake you, but don't let it throw you off your mark, though, when it happens. You've got to keep moving forward. We got kingdom building to do. You got to be like they used to say, water on the duck, let it roll off your back. Amen. And keep your sleeves rolled up and keep doing the work. Because God rewards obedience. I'm going to just throw this book back here. Matter of fact, he says, verse 15, do not ask God to take us out of this world, but keep them from the evil one. Because the disciple's place in this lifetime is on the front line. It's on the front line influencing the world for good. This is front line ministry, baby. This is it. We out here with the hurting, the sick, the hopeless, the lost. This is front line ministry. This is not that glamour ministry you see on TV. This is ministry where we ought to love the unlovable. Amen. Hug the unhuggable. Come on, somebody. Amen. Be a light in the dark place. Pray to somebody to get a breakthrough. Doesn't matter where you are. You ain't running. This is not where you gotta, you know, one of those places where you gotta make an appointment and then you see your pastor five weeks later. This is not one of those kind of ministries. You may run into one of us at the dollar store. Or Walmart. Come on, somebody. And say, Pastor, I'm glad I ran into you. I need to holler at you. And we're okay with that. We're okay with that. This is frontline ministry. And when, you, and when you're serving in a frontline ministry, you need your people around you. We need to be on the same battle plan. Am I right about it? You got to be maneuvering soldiers and covering your flanks and have your overwatch up there. You got to have things in place. You can't be hands off in a frontline ministry. The war is too great. Are you hearing me? It's too important. There are people out here dying, going to hell every day. Souls are at stake. I don't want to leave it to chance. I want to know what's going on. I want to be plugged in, and you want to be plugged in, and we want to be undergirding each other. Because when you start moving and shaking for God, oh, the enemy gets mad. He gets mad, and he wants to come after everything that you love. And you need brothers and sisters to keep you, to undergird you, to protect you. Because I said before, church is about community. We can't do this thing by ourselves. It's about community. One could put 10,000 to flock. When we come together with one heart, one mind, my God. Jesus only had 12 and he turned the world upside down. Imagine if we got 67 or 87, the things that we could do in this community. You just got to believe it. I believe it. And I'll conclude with this. So as difficult as this task may be, we have to keep moving the kingdom forward. We should expect persecution, but not let it stop us. We need to endure it, we have to endure it, and keep moving.
keep moving. Inches. We used to have a football term called inches. We're playing for inches. And that inch can turn into a mile. Look, fam, our love for Christ and our love for one another should drive us to be different. We should not look like the rest of the world. We shouldn't look like this paper mache love that the world likes to throw around. It shouldn't be lukewarm. It shouldn't be thin. And it shouldn't run at the first sign of trouble. It shouldn't be contingent on a quid pro quo relationship. Glory be to God. Just as our love reflects our obedience, it should allow the gospel to flow freely. We should be interceding on behalf of one another, walking in unity, standing up for one another when we have to, and accepting the fact that persecution will come. But it's how we respond yeah. is what truly matters. Amen. It's what makes the difference. I used to tell folk all the time, I always use this illustration, I am not responsible for how my wife treats me. Amen. I'm not, although she, she treats me well. Amen. I don't, you know, she used to say, they may think I treat you crazy. No, she treats me like this time, she treats me very well. 27 years, thank God for her. So, but I'm not responsible for how she treats me. But I'm 100% responsible for how I treat her. So if she's having a bad day, I'm going to have a greater day. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Are y'all with me? Are y'all tracking? We can't be drawn in to somebody else. We can't be drawn in because we're responsible for how we react. Too many times we react based on our circumstances. Am I right, Doc? We let our circumstances control our reaction. But I come to learn this in my years of living. If I can control me, I can control my circumstances. I'm responsible. If she decides she wants to get up and talk crazy or, or say something crazy and all that, that's okay. I'm still going to love her and treat her the way I'm supposed to be treated because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm not going to buy into that shenanigans. And I don't expect her to buy into my shenanigans because I have my days. Come on, somebody. Am I right about it? And that's what we have to remember. If we can keep, if we can keep ourselves in check, oh, we're going to have a blessed relationship. We're going to have a blessed relationship. She's responsible for how she treats me. I'm responsible for how she treats her. So it is with the law. So it is with the people in the world. Yeah, that guy that cut you off in traffic, him too. Yes. Come on, somebody. That boss that talked to you crazy when you went in, yep, him too. You know, that, that platoon sergeant, you squinge every time you see him coming. Yeah, him too. <laughs> We're responsible for how we treat. Yeah. I hope y'all receive it today. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we know that your word never comes back to us. Lord, I may not always know why you take me down the streets or some of the roads that you do, but you know. Sometimes, Lord, I just feel me because I know that your plan is greater than me. Father, I thank you for showing up today. Father, I thank you for blessing your people today, Father God. Father, I thank you for every heart and mind that's open that they may receive today what they came here to get. Father, keep us. Protect us. Shield us. But also teach us. Chasten us. And grow us, O God. So that we may know that we're walking. Someone falls upon their knees But has to speak the truth that sets men free Anytime the choice is made to stand upon the word I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move